Hello, Leonard from Len and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance here again. I hope you're well. Today we have a Yamaha MQ7. Fantastic bike. Unfortunately, this one has an engine management warning lamp which is on. It should go out when you ride the bike and it's staying on all the time. The bike starts and rides actually very well, but we want to get rid of this engine management warning light or find out why it's on in the first place. So we're going to use the Texa TXB uh, with IDC5 software. So I'm going to select the bike part of that. Um, select motorcycles, we could have personal watercraft or snowmobile. Clearly this is a motorcycle. And I'm going to skip to ya Y for Yamaha. And scroll through to find the bike, in this case MT07. We then have a choice to diagnose the ABS, the immobiliser or the petrol injection. I'm going to click petrol injection because it's an engine management warning lamp. We then only have one choice, Denso 2014 onwards, serial diagnostics, um, click start. Um, sometimes there's more than one engine management uh, choice there. We then have a choice of which lead we're going to use, an AP47 or an AP59. The AP59 has the advantage of multiple option connectors. I'm going to click confirm to that. The USB hasp needs to be in. That uh, is a hardware and software protection protocol between the software and the vehicle connection interface and the hasp. So the software is connecting, in this case, through a USB. It can be connected with Bluetooth, but USB is fine to the TXB interface vehicle connection interface the txb is then connected to the bike in this case with lead ap59 we don't need three pin connectors we don't need the one pin connectors we need to connect to this socket it's a four pin diagnostic socket quite easy to identify because it's been blanked off by yamaha and the four pin connector once it's connected, you can see some telltale lights on the TXB. So now the bike can connect to the lead. The lead can connect to the TXB. The TXB then communicates through the USB back to the software. And um, now that the software is up and running, hopefully we can have a connection then so. Click start, AP59 lead, click confirm, and the software now is trying to establish a connection to the bike. It says turn on the instrument panel, that means turn on the ignition, it's on, so I can click confirm. The ECU version is recognised, that's good so far, and it asks us to wait for 30 seconds while it attempts to make a connection to the ECUs on the bike. Scan system in progress. You can see that while the system is scanning, the dashboard does change in its display. It then says turn off the instrument panel. I'm going to click confirm. And when the Texa TXB software and the IDC5 software is on, you have a parameters button here, faults button, status, ECU info, activations and settings. Now, parameters are very useful in some cases. In this case, I'm going to skip the parameters and go straight to the faults. Um, in this case, we have a fault for a tilt sensor. It's a memorised fault. An idle stop, memorised fault. Idle speed control valve compensation, memorised. Another one for idle speed control compensation blocks at minimum, memorised. Engine startup problems de detected, memorised. And engine stall detected. Scrolling up, we've got an auction sensor fault memory and a can line to dashboard memory fault. Now, it's quite unlikely, given the fact that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fault codes, that 8 faults are present on the bike. Much more likely because these are memory faults, that perhaps the battery voltage has been low or uh, the bike has been started with a low battery or left it idle for a short period of time. So what we will do is we'll take a note of all these faults. You can print them out or write them down, take a screenshot. 
we will then delete all of those faults and start and ride the bike again. If any of these faults come back, then we would interrogate them more thoroughly. If none of them come back, then hopefully it was just a low voltage or a glitch, which is no longer present. While we're here, we can just click on the status tab. That lets you check gear shift position and mode selection. ECU information tells you it's a Denso control unit and what software version is in it. Um, and how many operating at uh, the operating time. Um, the activations is really useful when you're doing diagnostics. You can check the activation of the ignition coils, clear the fault codes, which we'll use in a minute, turn on the fan, turn on the headlamps, fire the injectors, run the idle speed control valve, etc. etc. And there's also a settings tab which will tell you um, this can be useful for resetting self-adapting parameters. We might need that if the fault code clear doesn't work on its own. Um, so, first of all, we're going to take a little minute, we'll take a wee break, note down what these fault codes are, and then go through the delete process. Thank you. See you soon.